Pipeline Knowledge and Development's introduction to oil and gas pipelines has been upgraded to introduction to midstream. This is Tom Meissner, Principal Pipeline Knowledge and Development. What we've done is added in some additional information about the different forms of transportation in the midstream, truck, rail, ships, barges, for example. And we've also added additional information about natural gas processing, fractionation of liquids, natural gas liquids, and liquefied natural gas. So we don't have time to show you all of those in this little uh, short tutorial. I thought you might be interested in seeing some information about other modes of transportation in addition to pipelines. So here we have a crude oil transport truck. If you look at it, it's just parked there in the parking lot. There's nothing too spectacular or different from it about it from other trucks. You can see we have the tractor, very standard type of tractor, and then we have a trailer, a tank trailer, that is designed specifically to haul crude oil. You can see in the middle, just about the center there, there's a red oval, and it goes around a hose and then a connection point, a manifold. And the driver would hook the hose up to a pipe that would come out of one of the tanks, one or more of the tanks at that production facility. He, they would likely uh, measure the oil, pump it out then into the tank, the truck tank, measure how much is left, and then the difference between how much was in the tank before they started and how much was in the tank after they started is the amount they took out. So very common to truck crude oil from production areas, particularly early in the life of the production area before we've had time to build the gathering pipeline to take it to a central area. Here's a picture of a custody transfer unit. So what this is is the measuring unit that would measure this crude oil when it's coming off of the truck. If you look at the left hand side you can see that sort of orange color colored hose. Looking back from there you see a little centrifugal pump being driven by a motor. Then we have the crude oil coming off, going up through a basic sediment and water monitor. Maybe it's called a sediment and water, not basic sediment and water. Looking at impurities, we have it going through a sampler. And the sampler container there is that uh, pressure vessel that's uh, back towards the back, left-hand side. Then we come, in this case, to a positive displacement meter. You can see the little counter head there. And then we go into whatever tank this is designed to be delivered into. There you can see is where the connection is of the hose. There is the electric motor. Then we have two arrows. The one on the left is pointing to the uh, container for the sample, and the one in the middle is pointing to the head of the counter. Here's another picture of a truck unloading spot. You can see the truck in the background. You can see the automatic custody transfer unit there. So in this case, what the truck has done is, or the truck driver, has measured the crude oil when he picked it up at the site, and then come over and hooked up and pumped it off into this little tank without measuring it. And then they will pump it from this little tank through the automatic custody transfer unit in the foreground left, into the tanks where the pipeline company will take custody of it. Here's another truck unloading spot. This is up in the Rocky Mountains where you can see it's very common to have a truck pulling a trailer. So the tractor won't get as good a traction as this truck with weight above the wheels. So in areas like the Rocky Mountains, very common to have this kind of arrangement. Here is then a crude oil terminal, so the truck has pulled into here and it's offloaded. You can see a number of tanks there. Little arrow on the left is pointing to the truck unloading spot, so that's where they will unload the trucks. And then it'll go into one or more of these tanks. If you look at the tanks, you can see they look a little interesting. They look like maybe, particularly if you look at the tanks there in the upper or the middle left, they might have actually... Uh, roofs that go inside them and float up and down on the crude oil. In fact, that's what has happened here. And you can see the little things that look like uh, the hour uh, arms on a clock that are pointing up to about 1 o'clock on those two tanks in the upper left. Those are actually the stairs that come down to the tank. And they're on wheels, and as the uh, roof goes up and down, the wheels roll and the angle of the roof gets more or less. In the very middle you can see a cone roof tank. So a little bit about tanks. Then over here 
on the right hand side the manifold area if you look closely just to the left of that arrow you can see there are two pump units so here's where the crude oil will be pumped from so a crude oil terminal where the trucks will unload moving on to rail here's a rail rack and you can see the railroad coming in very nice uh, clean facility and you can see if you look at the stairs going up on this platform we've got to get on top of these cars to open the dome lid and such and so we've got little uh, hand railings that are built there so under each of these hand railings that you can see going down the rail rack there'll be a car that will be spotted or stopped this is an unloading facility as I recall it can also be used for loading just depends on what you want to do with it so when those cars are spotted There'll be a little uh, gangway, if you will, that's lowered down onto the uh, tank, and then the people can get on and work. And you can see there's various piping uh, underneath the rack to be able to, in this case, they unload by uh, hooking up those hoses. You see in the middle, kind of to the left, right by that, whatever that yellow thing is, there's a yellow hose laying down. So it's hooked up to some piping, and then the terminal operators will come hook these hoses to the bottom of the cars and then let the uh, crude oil, in this case, flow out by gravity. Here's another offloading spot. You can see a little closer up. You can see those handrails that I referred to before. This, I believe, as I recall, is actually a methanol offloading, not a crude oil offloading, but it would look very much the same as a crude oil offloading facility. And you can see, if you look closely, there are some hoses that are uh, kind of coiled up there that will be used to hook onto the cars, which will then be uh, gravity fed off into a pumping unit that will then pump them into tanks. If we go on top of the car and get a closer look at the top of the car, we can see the handrails there that uh, are on the car. And then we can look at the hatch. So this is a, a opening that can be uh, opened, can be a lid can be taken off. And you have to do that before you start unloading the uh, tank car because you want to let air be able to come in as this crude oil or whatever the liquid is is drained out. There we have a bread box and that's actually a storage container. So what they're doing is they'll have various valves and whatnot they'll need to have handy and so they'll leave it in this bread box and it'll stay up there and travel from site to site. Here's another shot of the rail spot and you can see the little gang planks up towards the top to be lay, uh, will be lowered down and the handrails and if you look down towards the bottom if you look at very close about two inches from the bottom of the screen and uh, right towards that uh, girder that's going up you can see a little red and that's a turbine meter for measuring and so you can see we have the hoses very simple straightforward kind of bring the rail cars in hook them up and let them drain out so an unloading spot and a loading spot will look very very similar in one case of course the crude oil is coming off in the other case it's being loaded on now in a loading spot you would typically also have vapor recovery or vapor combustion so there will be some piping that goes over that uh, hatch that dome that we were talking about earlier that would catch the vapors that are displaced out of the tank as the tank is being loaded and they would take it to a device to either burn the vapors or recover the vapors so we don't let them into the atmosphere Moving on to barges and ships, you can see here's a picture that has both. In the foreground is a barge, and then in the background are ships. And these barges and the ships, too, will have compartments in them, and so they, these are uh, being offloaded, and so they will let the uh, crude oil come off. It will be pumped off by the, uh, the tank pumps. Here's another better close-up of a tank transport. You can see the hose that is running from the dock facility or from the shore facility out to the barge, which will be able to uh, either load or unload, depending on what you're doing in any case, this uh, whatever's in these tanks. If you look at the very background, you can see rail cars back there. And if you look over background to the left towards the top, there are three towers. One looks like it's pink one's uh, white and one is uh, kind of a light blue and I believe those look like I'm not exactly sure but I believe those look like they will be the flares associated with vapor cover recovery when you're loading uh, vessels 
So here is a ship. It's tied up. It's got the loading arms there. You can see the ship and then in the foreground those loading arms, those won't be attached to this ship. Those are actually the loading barge, the loading arms for another spot. So there are several places along this dock, this facility, where boats or tankers or uh, barges can be tied up and they have several load arms up and down that will then be connected to whatever vessel is tied up there. If you look way towards the back, lower right, you can see another set of load arms just hanging down there. So ship and loading arms. In sort of wrapping this up, here is a picture of a LNG, liquefied natural gas tanker. Normal type of a ship, except it has these special tanks. These are four tanks. In this case, these are moss types of tanks. There are several different types of tanks to contain the liquefied natural gas. These are moss tanks. They're membrane tanks and various other types as well. So in this case, these uh, tanks have liquefied natural gas inside them. And so what we do to turn natural gas from a gas, a vapor if you will, into liquid is we cool it and put it under pressure. In this case, the uh, natural gas in these tanks is going to be somewhere around minus 259 to 260 degrees or so Fahrenheit. And when it's that cold, it doesn't take very much pressure to keep it in liquid form. So these look like, because of their dome shape, they're pressure tanks, but they actually have very little pressure. And as I'm teaching classes, one of the questions I always get asked about liquefied natural gas is what happens if you sort of, the ship breaks down or if you have some kind of a failure, how do you keep the gas that, or liquid I should say, because it's not a gas, it's a liquid, liquid methane. How do you keep the liquid cool? And the answer is basically you're letting some of the liquid turn into gas. As it turns into its gas, it absorbs energy and so that's what keeps the rest of the liquid cool enough to stay liquid at the temperature in the tank. And then you take this uh, liquid methane that has turned into gaseous methane absorbing energy and you either recompress it, recool it, and put it back in the tank or you may feed it to the engines and the engines may in fact burn that. So, a little bit about alternate forms of transportation. Glad that uh, you could take a look at this. If you have any questions or comments, you can feel free to send me an email, tom at pipelineknowledge.com, or you can give me a call. Always happy to talk to people about pipelines.